Hey, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Um, I'm just going to give a little summary of what went on over the last six months, and then I'm going to be getting into the matches of my first tournament back. So here we go. So basically, in October, I tested positive for COVID, and I took a couple of weeks off, had a normal COVID symptoms, nothing extreme was really going on. And when I started getting back to playing again, I followed the advice that was laid out um, with like the return to play protocol and all the guidance around building up to your max heart rate, taking it slow, etc. And it was all fine until I started doing interval training on the bike. And basically what happened was I was doing my normal session, pushing it quite hard. My heart rate was getting to about 160 and then I started feeling like really sick. So I just called it off and stop the session and didn't really think much of it until the next day where I did the session again and the same thing happened I started feeling really sick when I got halfway through uh, but this time it kind of progressed on to other symptoms so I suddenly started feeling like really faint and dizzy and like I was going to pass out I couldn't stop shaking my heart was pounding everything just didn't feel right um, it took me a long time to feel back to normal from all those different symptoms. So ended up calling 111 and got sent to A&E for a bunch of tests. They did blood, ECG, had an echocardiogram done, and we, basically that all came back absolutely fine. Um, and the only thing was that I had like chest pain for the following few weeks after that. Um, they still thought something weird was up, obviously. And so I was basically just told, to do the same session again, but this time they would give me a 48 hour ECG monitor to wear to see if anything else is going on or to see in more detail what's going on whilst I'm doing the session. And long story short, basically when I did the session again, the same thing happened, but this time to a much worse extent. And when I got the results back, the doctors told me that my heart actually paused and flatlined for a series of times um, lasting somewhere between three and five seconds each time. Um, obviously this was like really surprising and the doctors were surprised themselves and were pretty unsure as to what was actually going on. Um, all they knew was that it was COVID related and lots of young sporty men specifically had been suffering from heart related COVID problems. And this was just another one of those things they said. Following this, um, I was told that I had to be really strict on having complete rest and no physical exercise whatsoever until they had more tests done. And it was actually pretty scary at the time because a lot of stuff was spreading around in the news about how sportsmen suffered from cardiac arrests due to the COVID-related heart issues and that they were having myocarditis and all this type of stuff. Um, so yeah, it was this time where I was like, didn't really know what was going on, um, knew something weird was up. Um, and was basically just told to rest until I had further tests done. And um, during this time, I just started watching a ton of YouTube channels, just going down the YouTube rabbit hole and a bunch of different stuff. And that's where I discovered a load of different tennis YouTube channels, um, specifically the Tennis Brothers one. I know Felix, he, he's doing awesome with the Tennis Brothers. That's also where I discovered a bunch of the other ones as well, like Gladiator Tennis, Jules Marius, just watching a bunch of those ones. And I kind of thought, oh, if I if I don't play tennis again, I kind of wish I had done something similar. It's kind of really cool how you're able to look back on journey, see how you progress and just document it. And I was trying to look back on all these different videos I had of myself. I just had like different clips here and there. I didn't actually have whole matches to go back and watch and just really see my journey. And I was thinking, well, if, if this is the last time that I'm going to be able to play tennis, then it's kind of sad how I don't have anything to look back on. Anyway, at this time, I was pretty convinced that I had myocarditis um, as I had a bunch of similar symptoms when I was looking it up online. Uh, but luckily, I had an MRI and it ruled it out. My, my heart was absolutely fine according to the MRI. So um, I was given a plan by the doctors to build up my fitness and get back to where I was before um, at the time where I was doing the interval session. So the plan was basically to get me back to the stage where I could do the interval session again on the bike and this time wear the ECG monitor and see if anything weird was still going on. Over the time where I was building back up to this, I noticed that my chest pain started getting much less and all the other symptoms I had was 
reducing. So I was kind of hoping that the ECG test with the bike again would be fine, but obviously I was a lot more nervous this time considering what happened the last three times. And so when it came to actually do the session, um, it ended up being fine, which I was obviously really happy about. And I was told that I could carry on as normal and I only needed to go back to the doctors if I had more symptoms. Although I was obviously happy that I could continue playing again and get back to training and competing, it still feels a little bit strange considering the fact that something weird was happening with my heart and now it seems like it's not, but hopefully it's just, it's just COVID related and it's um, gone out of my system now and I can go back to normal. After what I experienced in the last six months, it's actually just given me a whole new outlook on tennis. I'm just taking it day by day at the moment. I'm really enjoying being able to play on the court. And I'm just kind of left this feeling where like, I don't really know how long I'm going to be able to play for, but I might as well make every day count. So as I said before, it's kind of why I've decided to make this YouTube channel, just to track my tennis and see how I progress and just have something to look back on for the day where I actually do have to stop playing tennis. So where am I at now? Well, I've been able to resume my role as a player and a coach at the Delgado and Lee Tennis Academy. I started training again for myself for two weeks properly. Um, been coaching a bit longer whilst I was building myself back up to doing the ECG test again. Um, but yeah, I've basically two weeks of training and now I've got my first competition back. It's a grade four event at Sutton. Um, I'm starting back slow because I haven't played a tournament in so long. I'm nowhere near my fitness levels that I was. And my tennis is not near where it was before. My current UTR is an 11, roughly. And I think the people at this tournament are roughly about a 9 UTR level. So let's see how I get on. So I actually started the match pretty well, considering how little I played, really tried to take ball early, be aggressive, as that's something I struggled to do before. Um, yeah, so I was actually quite pleased with the first game, um, taking advantage of my of my serves, um, taking the ball on, it was all, it was all pretty solid start. Um, one thing I should say is that um, in the two weeks where leading up to this tournament, I did pick up a little shoulder injury. Um, so I could only serve about 50-60% and if I served any harder then I'd get pain with it. So I kind of figured out that it was more important to get back competing and figure out how to win on the match court again than wait even longer to wait for my shoulder to get fully recovered. I actually struggled a little bit to time my returns. Um, I think that's something that most people feel when they don't play for a while is just reading the game, reading when to split step. As we can see here, this is where I really start struggling on my serve, holding back a little bit, not fully committing to it, and then leading to a bit of double faults. And then after the, the, my first serve game actually went quite well, this really affected the match and lost a bit of confidence on my serve and um, that affected my game as we can see here been quite passive doing quite well to get on the forehand a lot of the time but then not really doing anything with it and then spraying a couple areas and that kind of set the tone for the rest of the match here As we can see there, just stupid shot decisions, just led by tiredness. I really felt way more tired than I usually did. I kind of looked like I'm moving around the court okay, but really felt lacking in my speed and endurance. And it was really starting to get to me so early on, only three games in. Not really sure if this is due to COVID still, or if it's just because I hadn't played properly for so long. I reckon probably a mixture between the two. That's better really should have tried to come to the net a bit more, make the points a bit shorter and really take the ball on. Yeah, I'm doing well just to stay solid here, but really need to be taking those balls on more, being more aggressive with it, do something with my forehand, I'm doing well to get around it and then just rallying it back in. 
then just giving JK the opportunity to just rally with me until I break down and get tired and just go for a stupid shot. Doing well here to get on top of the point, but again, just not able to finish it off. Holding back a little bit on that smash. Yeah, I'd say that was a bit of a lucky win. Just went for a slap line to end the point. Jake's really targeting my backhand here. I'm not really hitting through it properly. A lot of slices going on, showing that I'm a bit tight. I think I was quite nervous for this match actually being the first one back. We are playing short sets here, so we're three all now and playing a tie break to seven to decide the set. Good that we played the short sets because of how much I was struggling, I would have, wouldn't have really been able to last for a full match. A costly error there, a big point. And again, here, terrible unforced error, but the way it goes when you don't play matches for a while. Jake doing well here to get on top of the point, finishing off the set, but should have really done more with a lot of those balls there. Second set went quite quick, made a lot of areas, tried to be a bit more aggressive and just wasn't really putting it together. A couple of good points towards the end of the second set, but overall it wasn't too bad. A lot of positives to take from the match, trying to do the right things, just too much match tightness and wasn't really able to execute properly, but overall can't, can't be disappointed considering that I'm actually able to play on the court here. At the end of the match I was really, really struggling. Wasn't sure if I'd be able to play the next one, but started feeling better as I had some rest period. So here we are in the second match now. Um, when I sat down after the first match, all I really thought was how it's just really tense, kind of felt like I was playing within the cage. So for this match, I just really went out, relaxed, kind of just imagine that I was just coaching and just that really changed everything for me. Felt really relaxed, started enjoying the match way more. Felt really good to be back on the court and um, my shots were coming off and yeah, this felt a lot more closer to normal and how I was before. See here, just going through my backhand now, rather than being tight on it, making my way to the net and then putting away a volley. Still not going through my smash, but the rest of my game was a bit more aggressive, so that made the difference here, being a bit more creative with my shots and moving my opponent about a bit. Still think I could be going through my forehand a lot more. Like there, just like I'm in like zone C, could be being a lot more aggressive on top of the point. Didn't need to wait three or four shots there to get ahead. Oh, little tweener from Hyder. Yeah, that's better. That's going through the forehand. Especially considering I'm not serving 100% and kind of just rolling it in, really needed to use my ground strokes to take advantage of these points.
Oh, that is one tight backhand there. It's like mixing up with a bit of seven volley. These are the type of stuff that I should have brought in the first match. I'm not sure about that. Oh. That's a good point there. Been a better idea to go across court pass there rather than trying to lob. Really waiting for myself to try and finish off the match there, and yeah, that, that was a lot more positive. So, um, really happy with that one. Overall, a really good first tournament back. Wasn't not miles off where I was, definitely need to get my fitness better and start feeling more comfortable on the court going through my shots, but that'll just take time with matches. All right, so let's do a little bit of analysis on the matches that I played during this tournament. So I played three matches, obviously 1-1, one, one, sorry, 1-2, one, lost 1. Um, and you saw the first two matches that I played. Um, I've actually gone back and made a little database to track my matches and to stat them. And so we can see in more detail what's going on. Um, I was able to go back and stat the, the first two matches that I played. So just by looking at it here... I've split it up into three sections. So I've gone my, how well I think I performed out of 10, what my mental score I give myself out of 10 and like my free score. So like how loose was I hitting the ball? So we can see that my biggest difference here was my free score between the first two matches it went way looser. And um, this contributed to my performance level increasing and we'll see how else it affects my, um, my statistics. Um, I gave myself a mental score quite low in all of them just because I was the first match back, wasn't really fully doing my routine, just getting frustrated at myself and a bit of negative self-talk. So I'm hoping that these will go up in my next few matches. So just to have a brief overlook at the two matches. Um, biggest difference was my winners and forced errors to unforced errors ratio. So in the second match, I felt looser and I felt like I was hitting through the ball more, yet I made way less unforced errors and I was hitting more winners. And that that's really the biggest difference between the two matches. Um, I converted the first point of the game a lot more. That's a big thing. And um, won a lot more first points on my first serve. So that's the biggest thing here. Um, the By the way, these bars, I've set myself targets. So it's how close to that target I've set myself. But then we can still compare it between the, between the previous match. Um, so yeah, that, that, that was the biggest thing. First serve points one, first point conversion and winners to unforced errors ratio. If I just quickly scroll across, see if there's any other big differences. Um, first serve points one. Sorry, first serve return points one. It was less than the second one. My opponent had a bigger serve. And that wasn't really a big difference between the two of them. Um, yeah, I think I think that's the, the main differences, but obviously there's a lot more data that I can go into and have a look at. But yeah, overall, first tournament back, happy. And yeah, uh, the next tournament that I played was a, another grade four. So um, I'll be going through that in my next video so you can see how I got on. And um, we can look at how the statistics are comparing to this tournament here. So thanks, thanks for watching all the way through if you have. And stick around if you want more um, tennis content. Um, watch me play my matches, want me to give some coaching videos, whatever. Leave in the comments whatever you want to see. And thanks.